I'm Tom Baker, this is Chasing Cars, and here with me today, I have a new electric car that I reckon is gonna be something of a game changer here in the Australian market. Now, this little gremlin is the Hyundai Kona Electric. It's a small SUV, it's based on the standard Kona that we're all pretty familiar with here, except this one swaps out the internal combustion mechanicals for pure electricity. It's got a 64 kilowatt hour battery underneath there that's good for about 440 kilometers of real world range, something that we're going to be testing out. Now, I reckon this thing is a great idea for Hyundai. They've already experimented a little with electric cars. They've already got the Ionic Electric out in Australia, but the Kona Electric more than doubles the range of that car, which is awesome. Secondly, it's based on this good practical SUV form factor. And thirdly, inside there are some upgrades that help to justify its 60,000 Australian dollar price, which is not cheap for a Hyundai. However, you are getting one of the highest ranges of any electric car on the market that isn't wearing a Tesla badge. Now, talking of the interior, we should go and have a look there because that's where we'll see some of the major improvements to this vehicle over the standard Kona. Now, obviously, to help justify such a high price point for a Kona, they have had to improve and spruce up the interior a bit, and I reckon that's actually worked because it starts with what is, you know, really quite a nice stone grey and blue leather combination. Now, you don't have to get this if you don't want this relatively light and futuristic looking interior colour. You can just stick with black leather. But you know what? I actually like it. I find it quite calming, quite relaxing, even and sort of platitudes like that. But coming back to the functionality of it all, it's good. But what I like is that you actually get a completely different dashboard and center console to the normal Kona. So there's this big console here that sits between you and the front passenger and it appears to float because it does have a big storage space underneath it, which is kind of cool. And you have all these satin buttons to control the electric car stuff and the convenience functions. So there's this push button sort of transmission. Not that this car has a transmission, but you know, you got the go button and the reverse button. You got all the climate control stuff here. You've got your heated and cooled seats because this is actually the Highlander model. So Kona Electric comes in two models for Australia, Elite and Highlander. This one gets even cooler stuff. You've got wireless charging here in a little opening tray ahead of the transmission buttons. And then up here on the dash, you've got an eight inch touchscreen with navigation, DAB, digital radio, Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. Now head of the normal Hyundai steering wheel in this kind of nice ice green sort of color. You've got a digital driver display, which always shows you your range, which is good to know. The overall charge of the battery and whether or not at present you are using up or generating electricity through braking. And you can see your speed in the center. Plus you've got a heads up display as well, which is cool. Now, quality is okay. I have noticed this center console actually moves around and squeaks a bit and it's too hard up here but apart from that most surfaces feel you know pretty forgiving and the leather actually feels quite nice so what about in the back we know the front is pretty good but can you actually fit people in the second row of the Kona let's find out shall we jump into the back seat and you find the door opens nice and wide so that's good closes with a nice solid thunk and the room back here is all right. So for six footers, got another inch or two above me, got just enough leg room sitting behind myself and toe room. Look, it's a bit constrained, but I could deal. I reckon you'd stick to two adults back here because this middle seat is pretty narrow, although there's no hump down there in the floor, which is good. Got a pull down armrest with two cup holders. But what you don't have are rear air vents, which is really weird because Hyundai often blames the lack of rear air vents where they've got a manual handbrake. This car does not have a manual handbrake. It's got an electric park brake, but no air back here. It's a bit of a shame, isn't it? One thing that isn't a shame though, is the boot space of the Kona, which is actually pretty good. This is one of the smallest small SUVs, so you wouldn't expect big things from the boot, but you know what? It's got 332 liters of space. And if I slide out the smaller of the chasing cars suitcases, you can see there's no load lip, so things go straight in and out. You do have a little luggage net there, plus shopping bag hooks, so stuff won't go sliding around on you in this boot. Now, no electric tailgate. I can't believe we're even complaining about that, but in this day and age, 
that's sort of becoming a standard feature, especially at this price point, but no big deal. You know what, I reckon it's all right. But what we need to do is take this Kona Electric out onto the road. So what's the Kona Electric like to drive? Well, it's actually really good to drive and there are a number of reasons why that's the case. But I'd like to start on the electric powertrain because that's what really makes this thing surprisingly entertaining to use as a daily driver, but also as a car to take out of town a little bit more often. And that out of town bit is really important. And that's because the Kona Electric has the range to let you leave the city with confidence that you'll be able to come back again you know, on a short day trip on the weekend or something like that, out of Sydney, out of Melbourne, out of the city that you live in. But back to the powertrain. So we've got a 64 kilowatt hour battery. That's pretty big. Um, you know, when the Teslas first started coming out, their smaller size batteries were 60 kilowatt hours. So the Kona, you know, it's not a small battery, but the good thing is, is that it's actually really quite powerful. This EV isn't completely dedicated towards saving all of that juice up. You actually are able to extract really nice and sprightly performance out of the Kona Electric as well. It actually makes 150 kilowatts of power and 395 newton meters of torque, which if you were comparing that to a combustion vehicle in this class, that is heaps. In fact, that's considerably more torque than the Hyundai i30N, and it's all available instantaneously, of course, because that's how electric cars work. All you have to do is plant your foot, and even at 60 kilometers per hour, planting your foot, you get an immediate chirp of the front wheels because there's simply so much torque going to them. It's really entertaining. And compare that to the Kona's now second most powerful engine, which is the 1.6 litre turbo, that makes 130 kilowatts of power and 265 newton meters of torque. So this thing has, you know, heaps more torque than that and it feels genuinely usable as a sort of everyday performance car. And you know what, I really like that part of the Kona Electric. Naturally, if you drive it in a more sedate manner, uh, you will get more range. Driving the thing like a madman means that you won't get as many Ks out of it. That said, I am finding every time I drive an electric car, the range is a truer indication of what you're gonna get than in basically any internal combustion vehicle. So it's not hard to drive the Kona electric and actually get 400 kilometers plus out of it. You just don't be silly all the time. Um, but yeah, it's, it's a good reliable amount of range. And the best thing is that you can drive it with two people in the car with the air conditioning going with the electrics and the sound happening and you're not diminishing that range too far so I do think it's it's easy enough to get uh, you know what the claim is out of this vehicle now it's not completely silent in its operation you do get a sort of simulated whirring effect that you can notice especially at low speeds and perhaps that's just to make you feel a little bit more comfortable with the Kona electric make it feel a little bit like a normal car to drive now compare that to the Volkswagen e-golf that I actually drove a few days ago and you'll be hearing more about that later that vehicle operates in basically total silence so getting into the Kona it's kind of weird having this simulated noise and I can't figure out a way how to turn it off I personally would prefer to turn it off. I do notice that it, it bings and bongs on the outside of the car uh, when you're reversing, uh, which is probably pretty smart actually because it does tend to creep up on people with virtually no sound, unlike a combustion car that is. And another big plus about the Kona Electric is that even though it's got a really big battery, they've managed to keep the mass relatively under control, which is not easy to do in an electric car because these batteries, they weigh a heck of a lot. So it only weighs about 1,650 kilos, the Kona Electric, which is a lot for a small SUV, but it's not that heavy for an EV generally, especially not one with really good range. Now you do notice that weight when you start to drive the Kona with a little bit more urgency. Um, there's quite a bit of weight transfer from left to right as you go through an S-bend or right to left. Um, but you know, the tires, the Nexen tires, they generally keep the Kona's weight in check and it's not a bad car to drive with a bit more spirit than normal. And the steering is actually relatively direct. Wouldn't mind it being a bit faster, but 
you know, it's quite a fun little car to punt around. But I reckon the best application for the Kona Electric is right here in town because when you see a gap in traffic, it's just yours. You just completely own it. Like, you just jump forward. It is shockingly quick accelerating off the line. If it had all-wheel drive and it was able to put all of that performance to the road with less tire chirp, it'd be really stunningly fast. But I still really love it. The throttle response is, you know, as crisp as it gets. And that was what I was reflecting on with, with electric cars the last few days I've been driving this Kona, is that the throttle response is like silkier than any combustion vehicle ever could be because you just have a completely direct relationship to the to the forward motion of the vehicle. It feels like a Dodgem car. I actually find it quite addictive, it's great. If you haven't tried it out, I'd go down to a Hyundai dealership and see if you can test drive a Kona Electric or you could go to BMW and drive an i3s or something like that, which feels kind of the same in the perky performance department. Now, the ride quality, um, it's just okay for me. I do think that the Kona Electric is nicely controlled um, and it doesn't float around on the road and it doesn't sort of feel seasick or anything like that. The, the suspension is, as usual for Hyundai in Australia, quite firm. And so it can be a little bit sharp over some urban imperfections, but especially as you build speed, the, the control factor I think is more important than that and, and the Kona feels nicely kept in check. As for refinement, that's not bad either. Um, naturally, with no engine noise, you tend to notice the sounds of other things much more distinctly. And, oh, that's the uh, forward collision warning, which is a little sensitive when you're going around corners, but I'll come back to that in a sec. Yeah, you sit, tend to notice all the sounds around you quite clearly, uh, especially road noise. A little bit more sound insulation would be good. And that's something that all EV manufacturers are gonna have to grapple with because it's kind of harder to, to isolate the passengers from all of those noises when there's no engine sound to cover it up. But on the safety front, both models are equipped with Hyundai's Safety Sense system, as you'd hope for at this relatively steep price point. So you get AEB, forward collision warning, adaptive cruise control with stop and go, blind spot monitoring, rear cross traffic alert, and a reversing camera. It'd just be nice to see a 360 degree camera as well. So those are my first impressions of the new Hyundai Kona Electric. I really think this EV has something to it. It's the first time this kind of range has been made accessible to so many people. It's relatively affordable. I mean, $60,000 here in Australia still isn't a cheap car by any stretch, but it's a lot less expensive than Teslas and the like that offer similarly flexible range. And so that's a good thing. It also doesn't hurt that the Kona Electric looks pretty cool in my opinion. It's got a nice cabin and it's pretty good to drive. Plus, being a Hyundai, you'll have confidence that the ownership will be solid and servicing, at least here in Australia, is cheap. Now, if you enjoyed this video, please subscribe down below and click that notification bell so you never miss one of our in-depth, high-quality Australian car reviews. Also, make sure that you leave a comment below and let me know what you think about the Kona. Share the video with your friends and give it a like. And as always, thank you for watching Chasing Cars.